have enough. Um, but fundamentally, if you don't build wealth, uh, if you don't have enough money to save, it's very, very difficult for you in life. It's very, very difficult to build wealth. But if you do, then you need to save some money. And I'm not going to put numbers on it. You save what you can. But fundamentally, the first thing is understand the relationship between your spending and your saving and save some money. Save some money is really important because it gives you um, a cushion, an emergency cushion in life. Most people, I don't know the, the numbers in your country, but you know, there's there's 13 or, actually, or maybe I think 18 million people in the UK. They don't have 100 pounds in savings. What that means is that when emergencies happen, and they always happen, the car needs this, the dog needs this, whatever it is, there's always going to be the boiler, the, 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 the roof, there's going to be a requirement for money. If you don't have any cushion, if you don't have any, say, any, any um, uh, a rainy day fund, whatever you want to call it, you are then plunged immediately into short-term high interest debt. And that's a very unsafe place to be. If you feel you have no cushion, if you have no safety net, you have nothing. So um, saving money for, uh, uh, for unexpected expenses. The one thing that plunges most people into debt is unexpected expenses. But they're, they're not unexpected in the sense that you don't know they're, they're not going to happen. You just don't know what it's going to be. But you know that in your life, there will be unexpected expenses that will arise on a regular basis so have some money saved for that um so uh save some money the second thing is um, educate yourself around how the system works financial literacy is a key part of this understand how credit card companies work debit card companies uh, take uh, um how to avoid getting trapped in uh high interest debt the third one is take ownership of your financial outcomes Believe that you are the person that's going to do this. Um, if you don't believe that you can change things, if you don't believe that you're in charge of your finances, if you don't believe that you can take control, then you never will. You've just given your power away. If you, it's, it's easy trap to fall into to believe that it's the system, it's the world, it's the whatever it is that puts me in the position I'm in. And I'm not uh, making light of the fact that people do find themselves in difficult positions, but if you... Don't believe you can change it. You give away all your power to change. So you have to believe in yourself that you can do this. You have to take agency. You have to take control because things can never change if you don't. And the fourth thing, the fourth positive behavior is broadly called social indifference, which is not worrying about trends in consumer goods and services, what other people say you should drive or wear or have. None of that matters. Those are messages from the media to get you to buy things. And the messages are that without these, you are not good enough. And that's just not true. You are good enough. You are enough. Don't believe anybody that tells you they're not because they don't know you. They're just trying to sell you some piece of rubbish. Don't believe any of that stuff. So when we put this all together, when we talk about how do I have a healthy and positive relationship with money, this is what it looks like. I feel good about myself. I feel good about money. And I feel good about money and myself. People who are good with their finances feel good about themselves. I'm competent. I have confidence in my knowledge and decision-making processes. I take ownership of my outcomes. My self-worth does not depend on my net worth or my possessions. I feel good about money. Money is a tool to achieve well-being. It's not the work of the devil, the root of all evil something we don't understand, something we don't talk about. It's not this unknown or confusing thing. And if I feel good about money in myself, then money or thinking about money doesn't make me feel anxious or ashamed or guilty. I am comfortable engaging with the financial system and I am the kind of person who manages their finance as well. Right, that positive um, outlook um, towards money, I think it's very important, right? 
Thank you, Dennis, um, for your professional insight on the subjects of money today. Now, moving on, right? Um, talking about making money, right? In my own country, we have people who go to work from 7 a.m. till 11 p.m., right? And I know in the U.S. also, some do I know, but most people talk about 9 to 5 p.m. So aside, um, aside that, how can the people make more money? Aside this 9 to 5 p.m. or 7 to 11 p.m.? Well, you're fundamentally asking the question of what's the difference between how do I work for money and how do I get my money to work for me? Mm. And most of us are, have only ever been shown how to work for money. We go to work, either we work for ourselves or we work for someone at the end of the month, end of the day, end of the week, whatever, somebody pays us something. We swap our time and our energy and we get money back in return for that. So that's the concept of working for money. How do I get my money to work for me is really moving into the concept of investment in terms of generating passive income. And you need savings to do that. So you need to have accumulated some money which goes back to the first positive behavior, save some money. And the second thing is invest it. And that investment, I'm not an investment advisor, so I'm not going to, to, to give you any specifics around it. What I will say, though, is that um, money or wealth can be built over time. So if you're looking to, uh, if you have a, a reasonable time horizon, 20, 30, 40 years, investing, over that period of time has historically always given a positive return. And when I say investing, I don't mean about individual stocks. Individual stocks are, uh, are things that um, you can never tell what's going to happen. If you look at the companies, the, 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 uh, the 30 biggest companies in the US, the Dow Jones, you look at the ones that are now compared to the ones that were in there 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or 50 years ago, they're all different. So, the concept of investing is more around investing in the stock market, which means that you invest in the performance of the overall stock market over time, as opposed to for specific stocks. And now you're able to do that quite easily. Um, so have a long time horizon, put aside money, invest it, invest it in growth, which is essentially economic progress and use low cost um, funds that track the performance of the stock market. Awesome. Thank you. Um, then it's a hard luck is once again for your time. And do you have any projects you're working on? So currently I'm working on um, a project on financial well-being to help employers uh, support their employees with financial well-being. A lot of it relates to understanding how we behave around money so we can make better decisions, uh, reduce anxiety and other negative emotions and communicate in healthy ways. There's a lot of negative communication around money, money fights in every household. And they're very, very vicious because your first question that you came to hit the nail on the head on Mabola, money fights are about self-worth. And so they tend to be the most vicious of all. And so if you're a child growing up and all, everyone is fighting about money over you all around you, what are you going to think about money? You're going to associate money with conflict, with, with, with stress, with, with a whole bunch of negative emotions. Very difficult to be positive about money and yourself if, when you grow up in a family where everybody's fighting and arguing about money. Um, and then I'm working on another project. Yeah, I mean, you have, to, you have to. So when we talk about our subconscious messaging around money, it's not just what people told us. It's mainly the way people behave. You look at every single other animal in the animal kingdom they don't they don't communicate they don't have lessons they don't have school but they learn everything from behavior and so your money patterns your money beliefs are hardwired into you by the time you're seven or eight based on how people behaved around money when you were growing up so one of the exercises i do as a money coach is talk about that stuff i mean let me ask you when you were growing up what did people say about money um, money doesn't grow on trees, right? So you need to really work hard to make money. Yeah, yeah. And so we, a lot of us embed that and go, okay, we need to work hard to make money. But at the same time, you're also asking me, how do I make my money work for me? <laughs> so don't- well, I think you've answered me. <laughs> <laughs> 
So remember this, if anyone is offering you a good, a deal that's too good to be true, it is too good to be true, right? Understand this concept of base rates. So what I'm telling you, what I mean by base rates is it, if we take, you know, an interest rate, I don't know what the interest rates are in, in Nigeria, but let's say the interest rate is 5% and some guy is offering you 25%, there is a risk, right? There has to be a risk. The base rate, the risk-free rate, the weight you could get by putting your money in the bank is 5%. Someone offering you 10 times that, always going to have some risk to it. Don't get fooled. Don't get, don't um, get sucked into the concept of, ah, this is going to make me rich, or this is going to, this is going to get me out of this mess. This is going to get me out of my hole. It doesn't work like that. Understand what the, what the base rate is, what a reasonable return will be with a reasonable amount of risk. And it's okay to take more risk than that. Just don't put everything into it. It's okay to buy crypto. I don't have a problem with crypto. Just don't put all your money into it and don't borrow money to buy it because any asset that loses 50% of its value in a week is not something you put all your money into. It's not an investment. It's a gamble. I have no problem with gambling at all, but you just need to recognize it for what it is. You didn't put all your, you, you don't borrow money on your house and go and go to the casino with it. So don't do that with, uh, with your, you know, in, in a financial sense by investing money in, uh, in schemes that think you make you think you're going to get rich quickly. Great, great. Any social media connections? Um, you like my audience? Social I, media connections? I, I'm I'm really sorry. The connection was bad. What, Your social media connections? Yeah. So you can find me at uh, Cambridge Money Coaching UK. Uh, I'm also on Twitter. Dennis D. Harlakis on Twitter. So Cambridge Money Coaching UK is my website. <laughs> I have stuff on there. Please come along. I've written lots of stuff about money and about your relationship with money and thinking about money and dealing with money anxiety. Please come along. It's all free. There's no uh, there's no paywall, nothing. Uh, come and find me. And there's also a contact form if you want to reach out and say hi. We'll be on the lookout. Are we good? <laughs> we can get it. Thank you once again, Daniel Halakis for your time on this show. <laughs> really been an amazing time. Now, this is really explosive and really, uh, you know, exposed me more to what money is about. Now, I know how to manage money well and also, you know, uh, be in a conscious state when it comes to money. I think that's very important. That consciousness is very important. And also the perspective we have towards money and our conditioning also is very important. I think we need to have a paradigm shift, right? In order to be able to, you know, uh, attract money and to be able to maximize its wealth, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Thank absolutely. you so much once again. I really appreciate your professional insight on today's show. I can only wish you the best in all your future interviews, right? And all likewise right, to you. Thank yeah. you for all the great work you're doing on Mabula. All right. Thank you so much once again. It's been lovely, my mobile last We really had a blast on today's show. Let's do this some other time till I come your way. I need to see some always. Talk to you soon.